Judith, people must not recognize you all the time. <laughs> it's, a, it's a slight, <laughs> slight change in Judith Light's appearance. Yes, but you know what? Today at the corner table, actress Judith Light, who played the overworked 80s superwoman on Who's the Boss, and is now starring on Broadway with a decidedly different hairstyle. Her restaurant choice is a new Manhattan hotspot called 11 Madison Park. Over lunch, we'll find out how eight years on a sitcom changed Judith's life. There's a sense of humor that one has to have about oneself, about life itself, and also about what you give to other people, the kind of joy that you can give to other people. And we'll learn how to prepare one of the trickiest fish from the sea, skate wings. Uh, skate have no bones. They just have this kind of cartilage in between the layers. And we cook it with a bone in because it gets a nicer flavor and better texture. And we'll find out how a woman who was a slave to her hair finally found freedom thanks to a razor. Uh, you know, is it a good hair day? Is it a bad hair day? What's the color like? What's the cut like? You have How no I hair day. Today. I, I have, I always have a great hair day. Every day is a great hair day. <laughs> but where are you taking? I'm where taking are we going? you right over there. But it looks like a, an, more like an office building than a restaurant. What it's am I getting into here? an old bank building. An old bank building. But what right. about the restaurant? Where are we going? Well, actually, where we're going is to be hit is, by a pack. <laughs> And Judith Blight, thank you for bringing us to 11 Madison Park. Such a beautiful space. I've never been here before. Well, I think you're going to love it. Well, I can tell that. Now, bef but before we order, we must talk about it. May I? You may touch it. It just uh, feels like me at about two hours after I shave. Right. So, what was this like? This must have been very scary. You had, on Who's the Boss, you had that flowing, beautiful hair. Mm -hmm. You're doing it for the play, which we'll talk about later. But what yeah. was this like? It was pretty extraordinary experience because I cut my hair in stages so that I wouldn't be so frightened when uh -huh. I actually did take the razor to my head and actually did shave my head. But uh, I have to tell you that it's been extraordinarily freeing for me. Freeing? Very freeing. I thought that I would be wedded to the way I looked and my hair looked for the rest of my life and I felt extremely controlled by it, as I know many women do. Uh, you know, is it a good hair day? Is it a bad hair day? What's the color like? What's the cut like? You have How am no I no hair day. <laughs> I I have I always have a great hair day. Every day is a great hair day. What, what do we use though? I mean, no more shampoo, no conditioner. With a little wax up there. No. What goes on top? No. Well, actually, I have a whole procedure that I do before I shave it, where I put powder on it. My manager, Herb Hampshire, told me how to do it. I put powder on it, and then I shave it with an electric razor, and then mm. uh, and then mm -hmm, I have a, a triple head Norelco, and I just just. There you, know, you go. I buzz it and then well, I put must, cream on it afterwards. I must say, I've known uh, very few bald women in my life, and you look marvelous. Look at those eyes. Just really lovely. Thank you. But I feel great inside. That's what's really remarkable that for me. That it was me. freeing. Well, we can get into yeah. more of that later, but uh, are you, on a scale of one to ten, is there a little hunger? I am a little bit hungry. I know you're I a hard-working actor. I so. am. Let's, let's see what, how the menu is. Right. There's something on the menu that... Um, I was chatting with the chef. I, I'm going to try the sautéed Louisiana shrimp because right. this is a head-on shrimp. Right. And you don't get to see that that often. I'm going to tell you how you can tell if a head-on shrimp has been frozen or not when you get it on your... I've never heard of well, that. Well, you'll see. You'll see when it comes in. And the other thing I like is information, information about my food. Good. And, and the, I'm going to have the consomme because I also get very cold. Well, how about a hat? Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. I, I wear a hat on and off, but but uh, because I get cold, I, I like to have something. So you're warm. a little more chilled with with, yeah. with no hair. Well, you had a lot, you know, to keep in. And how about your entree? Um, I think I'm going to do the skate. Skate. Uh, yeah, that's very unusual fish, and um, I think it really is the mark of a good restaurant how they do it and I have a feeling that they do it really well here. Well I've heard that. I've not eaten here before. I'm going to try the grilled veal breast which is interesting because I to grill a veal breast has to have, there has to be some preparation in there. They're not going to throw it on the grill so I want to see how they actually do that. Right. May I take your menu? Please? You may. Reminds me of the days when I was a waiter. Thank and you. our waiter delivered beautifully presented food. Consomme of summer tomatoes with herb lobster ravioli for Judith and sautéed Louisiana yeah, sure. shrimp with sunchokes and baby greens for me. Mm -hmm. You were a waiter? Of course I was a waiter. Everybody in show business has been a waiter. Have you been a waitress? 
No. You were ne you never worked in a no. way. No. You must have gotten no. a very fast start in your career. Well, I was very fortunate, and when I wasn't working, I was living on unemployment. Ah, so, so you, <laughs> never, you never sling hash. No, right? no, I never had the to. The consomme looks wonderful. It's fabulous. It, it also has well. all those little baby tomatoes in it, the little yellow ones and the little red ones. Tomatoes are getting smaller and more tasty. Would you like a little? No. little I would. The shrimp actually. on the yeah. side or in? You want it to plunge in. Thanks. So I said, this is how you can tell. Right. First, it's very rare to get head-on shrimp, which I have here. Right. If the tentacle, you oh. know, they have a long head-like tentacle, is still long and in place, it it's probably terrible. has not been frozen. These, there's no real major tentacle statement here, so I guess these shrimp, like no. most shrimp, have been frozen. Judith worked Good. for eight I mean, hot years on Who's the Boss with you, Tony Danza. And Tony taught me so much. He taught me so much about comedy, and he taught me also to not take myself so seriously. And there's a sense of humor that one has to have about oneself, about life itself, and also about what you give to other people, the kind of joy that you can give to other people. And that was really what that period was about for me. Well, let's, let's go back to the beginning. When you were a little, you grew up in Trenton. I love that sign on the railroad. Trenton makes the world <laughs> take. You've probably seen that a thousand, a thousand times in your times. life. When did you first get bitten by the acting bug? When I was little. How little? When I was about three. And what started it? Where does it My begin? mother sat with me and helped me memorize uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas. And I did it for my father. I performed it for my father. You performed that at age three? And all through the house, not a creature was stirring. Even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care. And you know this. The hopes of St. Nicholas soon will be there. <laughs> oh, my and God. what on the roof there arose such a clatter? I sprung from my bed to see what was well, the matter. Well, see, you could have done Who's the Boss, like <laughs> you. <laughs> no, Tony was pretty good at doing that. So you, you, you performed. It was mm -hmm. the night before Christmas. And my father cried. And, and then you saw that tear. And I was you were just, I was, I was hooked. What was the atmosphere like? Was it a nurturing from the, well, you're, she's going to be an a actress. Yes. And she's seven years old and, you know, Drew is going to be an actress one day. Yes. And your father wasn't saying, no, you should be an architect. You know, it's a tough business. No, no. They really. They said it's a tough business. They, they, I would say they pushed you toward it. They, they encouraged you and nurtured you. Most, with, without question, most assuredly they were right there. There were all the lessons, all the dancing lessons, the piano lessons, whatever, whatever they felt I wanted or needed. They were, they were right there. My father used to drive me to rehearsals for community theater and he used to sleep in the car and wait for me. Do you think they saw every episode of Who's the Boss? I think they've seen it more than one time, even. <laughs> well, it's not too difficult. It's on. It's <laughs> know, all over the world. I know. I know. Uh, what, and what, Judith what, Light didn't just learn to I act as a child. She it. learned how to cook. Not a formal day. My mother was a wonderful cook. My mother's a fabulous cook. All the women in our family are wonderful cooks. And I have to say that including I, myself, and I love to cook. I absolutely adore it. Um, it's about nurturing and, and giving again. It's that thing about giving people joy. Coming up, Judith tells us about her first on-screen kiss with co-star Tony Danza. Hence this chase around the table, and then he grabbed me and we kissed each other. But first, let's go into the kitchen and see how Chef Kerry is coming along with our entrees. I'm Kerry Heffernan, uh, the chef at 11 Madison Park, and we're going to demonstrate today our skate grenoboise. Carrie begins by poaching the skate in a court bouillon made from carrots, celery, onion, leek, thyme, bay seasoning, vinegar, and water. So we poach it for a moment in there, and what that does is that sets up the flesh, and it flavors it and allows us to roast it in, in a shorter period of time, and it gets a better uh, color without cooking so hard. The fish is then dredged in flour, seasoned with salt and pepper, first. and placed on a cast iron skillet on high heat. You can see the oil is dissipating just a little bit, so you have just the right amount. Not too much, you can't crowd the pan at all. If you crowd the pan, it'll steam, and then it won't saute very nicely. To prepare the sauce, Kerry caramelizes butter in a hot skillet. You see that, that brown color? That's what they call noisette. It gets a nutty color and nutty flavor. He then adds lemon and lemon juice, croutons, caper berries, chopped parsley, and spoons the sauce around the plate. The skate is finished with a reduced veal stock drizzled on the dish. That's it. Skate grenoise.
Welcome back to our corner table with actress Judith Light at 11 Madison Park in New York City. The restaurant is located downtown in the Flatiron District and is the inspiration of famous New York restaurateur Danny Meyer. 11 Madison Park has a chic and spacious decor and is part of a growing trend of restaurants built in old bank buildings. The food is seasonal New York cuisine with a French twist and entrees include Atlantic salmon with a white bean puree and roasted lobster with summer vegetables. For lunch, I've got the grilled veal breast in a fennel emulsion, and Judith is dining on the sautéed skate. Back with Judith White. Judith, just to remind you, your hand for a play. Right? Yes. No, 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 the flowing locks. So we'll talk about wit in a yes. second. But you have the uh, sautéed skate, That's right. which looks wonderful. I want you to try that and tell me what you think. And you know what I told you before is I thought that these were baby zucchini. They're not. They're little pickles. Ooh. You want to taste this, don't you? Well, I'm, I can tell. I want to try mine first. Let me right. try mine. I have the the veal, which is grilled, but what they do is they braise the veal, then they slice it, chill it, and then grill it in order to keep it tender. Here's my bite. Right. It's not pot roast. It's not. <laughs> it's not your mother's pot no. roast. It's good. Judith now, White, best known for her sitcom hijinks, now stars in the intense Pulitzer Prize winning play Wit, about the last hours of a dying woman. It is a play about transformation. And how to live life. And how to live yeah. your life. And I knew that when I had, when, when they offered it to me, I was very scared and I didn't want to take it. And I had the possibility of something else that was very, very wonderful and very tempting. Mm. Um, but it was just a possibility. But I knew in my heart that I didn't want to live the rest of my life looking back at myself and saying I was scared. I was too chicken to do it. There's something you do in wit that I, I don't know how much money you would have to pay me to do this. At the very end, you shed your robe, your hospital gown, you go into a crouch, and in a triumphant moment, you spring up fully nude in front of the audience. For a moment, there is a moment there. I can close my eyes and I can see you in that moment. How about grappling with that? I don't anymore think about taking off my clothes. When I was thinking about in L.A. That's coming scary. and it was no, very, yeah. was just as shaving the head. Yeah. But once you begin to do something, it's, a, it's when you take risks in life, and I only used to talk about this, now You're I'm doing, doing it. it. You're doing it. And I'm thrilled about it. And if life presents you an opportunity, don't use all of the excuses that I have used all of my life and covering yourself up in one way or another to kind of, in a way, cover your behind what? to make sure you get through life okay, that you'll look all right and that you're in control. And we're not in control. We are... We, We'd like to be, but... We would love to be. Yeah. I still think I would love to be, but I have to tell you, not being in control in this way is a lot more alive. You, you, you mentioned something about worrying about your appearance, which is something I like to talk about. As an actress, you have had, I'm sure, in eight years in a sitcom and then on the, the soap opera, One Life Live, what I call appearance pressure. I have to look a certain way. Yes. Maybe the executives are saying, better slim down a little bit this season, and Judy. They did. They did. Oh, well, well, no, they never said it. But, but I mean, on One got, Life to Live, I mean, I was. They got, you got the vibe that you should be thinner. How have you dealt with appearance pressure then, before doing WIT? And what do you say to a woman right now who is horrified when she sees the skinny models and the skinny actresses parading in magazines and so forth and can't meet that standard? Self-love, body image, is all about what feels right for you. Hmm. If being thinner feels right to you, because I always said when I was heavy, there's a thin person in there that wants to get out. A lot of people say, oh, there's a fat person in me that wants to get out. That wasn't so for me. There was a thin person in there. You know what Brian Dennehy said, inside every fat man, there's another fat man who wants to be that way. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the point. It was, it was. Stop relating to things that are outside of you and start relating inside of you. When, when I was preparing for this afternoon's show, I was reading your, your biography. And you have seven, eight, maybe nine pages, small type, single space of humanitarian credits, of helping, helping with AIDS work. Where is that coming from in you? Why the need to do that? Because you're not just doing it, you are doing it in a truly activist way. 
It's important Why? to me because built to me, celebrity is a very hollow experience <laughs> unless you're using it for something else. I'm, I'm a straight woman. And if I can talk about what I see happening, maybe it will have an impact on other people. Right. Maybe my voice can be a different voice that says this shouldn't be happening and this needn't happen. In the business and show business, have you, being a straight woman, so associated with the homosexual community, has that hurt you at all, do you think? Do you think there's been a negative fallout of that? I think some people have said, like after I did the Ryan White story, right. people wrote me and said that they would never watch me again. And I said, okay, go with God, so be it. That's your problem, that's not my problem. Let me make a huge turn here. <laughs> back, uh, back to your career. Would you consider doing a, another soap opera or another sitcom, or is that pretty much behind you in terms of your desire for personal growth? You know, I have to tell you, um, that's a really good way to put it. I would appreciate that you put it that way. I, you know, when I first did the soap and when I first did the sitcom, those were two things that I said that I swore in my career. You would I never would do? would never oh, do. Oh, really? Absolutely. Wait, let's talk about One Life to Live. You were on that for about five years. Right. You but, but I have to, wait, just to correct that, I have to say that I don't say never about anything anymore because I don't know what I would do. If it came up and it was a great part, I might definitely do it. So Now, how about, how about some of your situations over the years in various shows like on Who is the Boss? Do you ever, did you ever have, for example, bizarre things with food on that program? Always had bizarre things with food. <laughs> Not bizarre things with food. That goes in another direction. Right. Where I mean, the first season, Tony and I had a food fight, which was, which was where we had our first kiss. He was in the kitchen and he was baking something, and I just threw flour at him. Uh -huh. And hence this chase around the table, and then he grabbed me and. We kissed each other. Mm. How nice. It was lovely. It was really lovely. It was one of the most wonderful shows that we ever did. And... Coming up, dessert, which Judith seems to like. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're back with actress okay. Judith Light at the trendy 11 Madison Park in Manhattan. And Judith has the dark chocolate terrine with kumquats, which we haven't seen that much of. And I have the plum fritters on risotto pudding. Oh my God. Oh my God. I think the dessert gods are smiling very happily on us. Smiling down on your shining little head. You know what head. this is like? What? Remember when you were a kid and your mother, well, maybe your mother didn't make it so great. But remember when your <laughs> what mother, did your mother do? Let's just. Chocolate pudding. That's what this tastes I like. I love chocolate pudding. That's what this tastes yeah. like with a little cake underneath. It's, and then ice cream on top. What could be better? So not that chocolate pudding out of the box. This is like. Yeah, that, no. Really? That chocolate well, pudding? Well, no, it doesn't taste like that mm. chocolate pudding, but Here. it has the texture of that. Uh, yeah, I need to taste it. It's this. a plum fritter. Oh, it's too much. No, come on. You can do it. Oh, my God. Mm. We're happy with That's it. That's huh? amazing. Risotto pudding? It's got something else in it. It's got vanilla bean, right. but it's got another flavor in it. It's almost like a licorice, doesn't it? Have mm -hmm. like a little, a little anise. That's yeah. it. That's really, That's really good. No, I want to uh, quickly, you're living in New York. Your husband's back in LA. We right. go to your New York apartment. Right. You know, we, we get the pass key from the superintendent. You don't even know that we're there. <laughs> we take the camera, we're into your, we go into your kitchen, we open up the refrigerator. What's in your refrigerator at home now? We got you on this one. I can help. You did. You surprised me. You're shaving cream for your head. You're like that cool. <laughs> no, that's right. Using electric razor. No? Okay. No. What's there? Iced coffee that I make from espresso. Good. From really good espresso. Yeah. Couple of Diet Cokes. Couple of uh, Snapple iced tea. Mm -hmm. Beverages uh, so far. <laughs> any, any hard goods in there? <laughs> Wait. There's, I think there's a. Um, my, my husband's birthday was just recent, and a friend of ours from California sent him a cheesecake from Ferrara Bakery. That's good. That's in there. 
um, and little cannoli from the bakery, mm -hmm. um, frozen bagels, and um, I have, uh, there's a bakery, a sugar-free bakery in LA that ships stuff to New York, so I have uh, a bunch of sugar-free uh, well, cookies and things, right? Well, 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 no, no, and oh. two bottles of really fabulous champagne and uh, Pellegrino. Mostly beverages. <laughs> yes, beverages mostly. and desserts. <laughs> As an actress, you've made a lot, made a lot of television movies. And actresses and actors have wonderful lives. You get to travel to locations. Where's one journey, one vacation, one adventure type trip that you've yet to make in your life? It's some place in the back of your mind. Someday I'm going to do that. I would love to go um, on the Nile, go to Egypt, and go on a Nile trip, and to Israel. I've never been to Israel. And my grandfather asked me once if I would go with him, and um, I didn't get to go with him, and then he died, and I, I've always wanted to go to Israel. So, Judith, like, we, we close each of our programs with a toast from our guests to the Food Network viewers, and, and every once in a while we get stuck like this with water, so we break tradition. Water is And fine. toast with water, so with the water in hand, or what, whatever, what, what would you like to wish our viewers? I would like to wish the viewers that their dreams come true, that they find the courage within themselves to do the things that they want to do gracefully and generously and courageously. And I wish them good life, long life, and great eating. Thank you. That's a well put and wonderfully said. Obviously, I echo that. And I, I wish you, my children, the best of health. Just stay healthy. You know, my, the proverb is, he who has health has hope, and he who has hope has everything. Thank you. I don't get that many kisses, you know, on this program. You're inviting the wrong people. <laughs>